This is 2OF Entertainment. So I'm just uh, on my way back from uh, the media drive launch of a new car, brand new car. Um, a very excellent one, as they always are these days. And um, of course, at the end of the day, then I get back, you know, into this thing, you know, after driving this brand new car around and being impressed with all the technology and all the engineering, all the gadgetry that's on the car, all the amazing things that it can do. And then you get back into this 35 year old 1989 BMW 325i SE E30 and uh, the sun is shining it's not bad weather actually uh, I think it's the last of the warm days we're going to get uh, in 2024 in the UK um, but it's got no AC so the windows are open and the sunroof is open but hey you know with these thin pillars in a car like this when you open the windows and the sunroof, it pretty much feels like you're driving a convertible. Um, there isn't actually that much difference. Um, and I couldn't help but reflect on, you know, how different it feels. And also reflect on the fact that how far we have come in terms of automotive technology and engineering in 35 years but also how much we've lost in that time. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. So I just drove this car. I won't say what car it was. It could be because it could be any car, you know, it could be any of the new cars that I've driven lately. Um, super efficient. Uh, very you know solidly does everything that you would want it to do it's a family car it's a family SUV spacious comfortable lots of thoughtful little touches undoubtedly safe lots of safety features lots of driver assistance features serene serene it was a plug-in hybrid this one serene absolutely quiet you know you could barely you know even when the engine kicked in you could barely hear it and um, smooth transmission had no shifts one of those single ratio things um, so no no gear change at all no sensation of, uh, of, a, of a gear being changed certainly no lurid deployment of power or torque no spinning of wheels or anything like that and then you know you get into this thing you, you know, you can hear it, you can smell it, manual gear shift, like I said, no AC, <laughs> um, it's got stereo, it's got, it's got a trip computer, you know, it still works on this car, it's brilliant, um, wouldn't trust it, but it's there, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's got everything that you need, it's got every. it drives, it stops, it steers, it brakes, it's got power steering, um, no problem, this is the great thing about 80s cars, is that they're pretty much as a, they drive like a modern car you know they may not have all of the features and all of the you know mod cons and all of that but they, they drive normally I mean there's nothing unrecognizable about you know the brakes are not unassisted the steering is is, is powered so there isn't anything that will take you by surprise or you know leave you struggling or shocked or surprised everything is you know as you're used to as long as you're used to driving a manual car but there are automatics as well of course and so so you can drive them all the time you can drive them daily not an issue if 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 governments will let you of course with this particular one it's not ULIS compliant i do live in london i can't drive it every day now um i was before before the ULIS expansion i was probably driving this four or five times a week now it's like four or five times a month if that uh which is a real shame especially given that despite what i've just said about you know this car you know you can hear you can smell it you can feel it actually the ride is really good even I have to say on the ride on this car even compared to brand new cars 
the ride on this is very supple, it's very uh, forgiving, it's very uh, comfortable, but at the same time, good body control. Great compromise, great bit of engineering by uh, BMW back in the day. Um, there you see it's in too high a gear, so now you know, you're wondering, should I shift down, should I keep it? You know, it's things that you have to think about, you know? Things that it's making you think about. Whereas in a modern car, like, you know, you wouldn't even know that it was in a gear or not gear or right gear or wrong gear, it really wouldn't matter. Um, but the, the, the visceral aspect of a car like this, you know, you can feel everything, you can hear everything. There is a, there is a, a pleasure. I mean, call it, call it a perverse pleasure if you like. That was wrong. Call it a perverse pleasure if you like. But there was a pleasure to, to driving it in that sense where, you know, it's, it's, it's a very raw thing to drive. Oh, yeah, can, we can turn around here, I think. Oh, this is good. And you make mistakes because, well, actually, I'm using the nav on the phone. <laughs> but I just misread the uh, road architecture there, being in an unfamiliar place. But, um, but, uh, but on the other hand, a new a modern car might have beeped and bonged and there's nothing like that. You know, you're on your own. You know, you're supposed to know what speed you're doing. You're supposed to know what's in your blind spot. You're supposed to be doing all of that yourself, you know. But on the other hand, oh, <laughs> just one corner and I'm grinning like an idiot just one corner and I'm like whoa and that's the difference and with the modern cars they've taken away the sound they've taken away the feel now they're taking away the gear change there's no steering feel in modern cars because they're all uh, you won't be able to hear me so I better close that window because they're all drive-by wire systems now or electric power, power steering systems Electric power steering systems, I really hate. Um, they, I mean, some of them get it right, but hydraulic is better because you still have some feel. With electronic, I don't think you do. And I was really sad when Porsche moved over to it a few years ago. But, you know, and even, like I said, even the modern cars. I mean, I remember, even with automatics, I don't really mind automatics. I've driven, I've owned automatics, I've driven automatics. And there was a kind of fun because you still could sense the, you could still feel the gear changes. You could still kick down in the older gearboxes. Um, you could even get it to wheel spin by slamming the car from neutral into drive. Yeah, most modern gearboxes, automatic gearboxes, over the last decade, two decades, I would, I would guess, probably don't won't let you do that. But prior to that, I remember, you know, you could have an automatic car and you wanted to do a wheel spin. So you'd, you'd build up the revs and then in neutral and then you just slam it into drive and off it would go. And, and, and you know, and it would be hilarious. So you can't do that now. And I remember driving uh, even flappy paddles. You know, some of them you can really like feel the changes slamming. I remember driving a Lamborghini uh, Gallardo Superleggera uh, in Dubai. And under hard acceleration, every gear change, every gear change felt like the engine was trying to snap off its bearings. You know, you could literally feel the whole thing sort of rotate every time, you know? Really kick inside the car. And you felt like if it wasn't tied down, it would either just, you know, catapult out the, out the back of the car or it would, it would spin the car around, you know? I mean, it was violent, but it was so satisfying, you know? And, and I think we're losing, we are slowly losing so much of the sensations that made driving what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, this is a, you know, this is a topic of discussion. And if you think that, no, driving is not about being violently uh, shaken in the car to the point that you're getting whiplash on every gear change. Driving is not about arm wrestling the steering. Driving is not about having to 
stamp both feet on the brakes because you don't know if it's going to stop in time. Driving is not about having to look over your shoulder because there's no system there to help you know if there's anything in your blind spot. If you think that all of these things, if you think that modern cars are making driving better, then hey, that's a valid argument. And you'll, you know, present that argument. And you know, you may be right. You may well be right. You may be, yeah, that is the case. But if, like me, you feel that no, driving is about feeling the car. Driving is about sensing the car. Driving is about, dare I say this, being intimate with the car. <laughs> In this sense, I don't know what you're thinking. In this sense, I mean, you know, at the wheel. Then, then yeah, then I'm, that's, that's kind of how I feel. Is it an age thing? Is it a generational thing? Topic for discussion. The good cars, I mean, honestly, like you can't fault them. Like I can't fault the car that I drove. It's brilliant in every aspect. It's safe, it's comfortable, it's reliable, it's solid, it's dependable. It's got some amazing features on it. And it will keep you out of trouble, it will keep you safe. But will it make you excited? Will it make you get home and think, oh, you know what, let me just go around the block one more time. I've done it in this one. Let me know what you think. I'll catch you all in the next video.